Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Today we're doing Illustrative Math, Grade 8, Unit 4, Lesson 7. Okay, first question here. Decide if it's always true or never true. Okay, first question here. X subtract 13 equals X plus 1. Well... X minus 13 has to equal X plus 1. Can you have a number take 13 away from it and have it be the same thing as that number plus 1? I don't think that's going to work. Let's check this out by trying to solve this. To solve it, I'd have to get all the X's on one side. So let's try and get rid of this X over here. That would mean I'd have to subtract x from that side. If I do it to one side, well, I'm stuck doing it to the other. So I'll subtract x from the other side. And then I'm left with negative 13 equals 1. Does negative 13 equal 1? I don't think so. That's never going to be true. OK, next one over here looks like x plus a half equals x minus a half. Looking at that quickly, I'm pretty sure that you can't add a half to a number and get the same thing as taking away a half. 5 plus a half is 5 and a half. 5 subtract a half is 4 and a half. That's not going to work. So, let me try solving it kind of like we did with the last one. Get rid of the x's on the left, I'd have to subtract them. But if I do that, they're going to cancel out on both sides. And then we have 1 half equals negative 1 half. That doesn't seem like it would work to me. What is next? Ooh, this next one looks like we might want to distribute a little bit. This one's going to be simplified some. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 3 is 6. Now on the other side, 5x subtract 3x. Well, that's 2x. Didn't do anything to the 6. Bring down the equal sign. Now I have 2x plus 6 equals 2x plus 6. Well, I'm pretty sure 2x plus 6 is identical to 2x plus 6. So that's probably going to always be true, but let me try solving it. Get rid of the x's on the left, I'd have to subtract 2x. Do it to one side, you've got to do it to the other. Then I'm left with 6 equals 6. Because those cancel and those cancel. How often does 6 equal 6? Hey look, my head's in the way. Who's the crazy person that put that head in the way? Okay, what do we want to do next? We have x subtract 3 equals 2x subtract 3 subtract x. Well, can't really do much to the left side of this. But 2x subtract x on the right is just x. Hey, we've got identical stuff on each side of the equation again. So that's always going to be true. Now for our next one here. We have 3 times x minus 5. Well, let's distribute this so we can organize it a little better. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10 plus x. Now what are we going to do? 3x minus 15. We can simplify the right side of this equation. 3x minus 15. Not doing anything to that side, but 2x plus x is 3x. What else on that side? Subtract a 10. Well, we have 3x minus 15 has to equal 3x minus 10. Is there a number that we can subtract 15 from or subtract 10 from and get the same number? No, there isn't. 
That's never true either. Okay, what is next? Whoopsie. For anyone who hasn't noticed, I'm trying out a new program to write with. I apologize for any stupid things I do, like when I just drew a blue line across everything. My says that the equation 2x plus 2 equals x plus 1 has no solution because the left side is double the right side. Do you agree with my? Well, if each side is identical, everything is a solution. Each side isn't identical here, so let's see what happens. My solution for trying to find out if an equation has a solution is always just try and solve it. 2x plus 2 equals x plus 1. Well, we got to get all the x's on one side. There's only one of them on the right, so I'm going to take that away. Do it to one side, you've got to do it to the other. Those will cancel. 2x subtract x is just x. Two apples take away an apple is one apple. Plus 2 equals 1. Now to get that x by itself, we've got to get rid of this plus 2 over here. So I'll subtract 2 from each side. And we're left with x equals negative 1. My says there's no solution. Do you agree with my? No. Why not? Because there's a solution. It's right there. Okay, what question is next? Write the other side of the equation so it's true for all values of x. Well, for it to be true for all values, each side of the equation needs to be identical. So you could have the exact same thing. Each side's identical now. Is it true for all values? Yes. You could also do some simplifying to this, like you could distribute that. Half times 6x is 3x. Half of negative 10 is negative 5 minus x. You could combine terms. Hey, look, I'm just simplifying this. 3x take away x is 2x. Subtract 5. Any of those would work. Anything that is identical to the other side will work. Okay, now what do I want to do? Write the other side of the equation so it's true for no values of x. So to be true for no values of x, it needs to have the same number of x's, the same quantity of variables on each side. But it needs a different number of constants. So we could just have 1 half times 6x plus 10 minus x. That simplified to before 2x minus 5. We could just have 2x minus 6. It needs to have the same number of x's, different number of constants, or just numbers. Okay, what is next? Elena and Lynn are trying to solve. Whoops, did it again. Elena and Lynn are trying to solve 1 half x plus 3 equals 7 over 2 x plus 5. Describe the change they each made. So, this is the equation they both have. Elena did something and wound up with this. Well, what changed? The left-hand side originally was 1 half x plus 3. The left-hand side now is just a 3. So what happened? That disappeared. What did Elena do? Subtracted 1 half x. Ooh, look, on the other side of the equation, we've got to subtract 1 half x over here.
Elena subtracted one half x from each side. What did Lynn do? Lynn, first step was to write x plus 6 equals 7x plus 10. What did Lynn do? Looks to me like everything's doubled. Lynn multiplied by 2 each side. Double the 1 half, you get 1. Double the 3, you get 6. Double the 7 over 2, you get 7. Double the 5, you get 10. Nice clean way to get rid of all those fractions that are likely to cause people some trouble. Okay, what is next now? Solve each equation. Okay, what are we going to want to do here? 3x minus 6 equals 4. Let's, let's distribute this. Not doing anything to this side. And this side of the equation, 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times negative 3x is negative 12x minus 8, because we didn't do anything to that. Now we can combine some like terms. Whoops, that was an 8x. Stop yelling at me. I noticed the 8x there. OK, we got negative 12x minus 8x. Let's leave that side of the equation alone until we combine like terms on the right. Negative 12x subtract 8x is negative 20x. Now what do we want to do? Let's get all the x's on one side. If I look at this, the left side's positive already with 3, and the right side's got negative 20. If I add 20x to each side, then I'm not going to have to worry about negative x's anymore. 3x plus 20x is 23x minus 6 equals 8. OK, now what do we have to do? we got to get rid of that negative 6. How do we undo subtracting 6? We add 6. Those will cancel. 23x equals 8 plus 6 is 14. Now, what's stopping the x from being by itself? Multiplying by 23. How do we undo multiplying by 23? We divide by 23. Do it to one side, you got to do it to the other. x equals, actually I'll do it over here, there's a little more space. x equals 14 over 23. OK, what are we doing next? Half of z plus 6 equals 3 over 2, z plus 6. What are we going to want to do first? Let's start out by multiplying everything by 2. Because if I multiply this whole side of the equation by 2, and multiply this whole side of the equation by 2, Half of z times 2, half times 2 is 1. So we have z plus 2 times 6 is 12. Now on the other side, if we're multiplying it all by 2, we just have to multiply the 3 over 2 by 2. And 2 on the bottom, 2 on the top will cancel. We have 3z plus 6 left. Okay, now what do we want to do? Now let's distribute. 3 times z is 3z. 3 times 6 is 18. z plus 12 is still there. Okay, now I see more z's on the right, so let's get rid of them on the left. Subtract a z, subtract a z, those will cancel. We are left with a 2.
equals 3z subtract a z is 2z plus 18. Now, what do we want to do? We want to get rid of that 18. Minus 18, minus 18. 2 subtract 18 is negative 16 equals 2z. Divide each side by 2. Negative 8 equals z. OK, one more of these. 9 minus 7w equals 8w plus 8. Let's get rid of the negatives. 7w, pretend that 7 looks more 7-like. Do it to one side, do it to the other. Those two cancel, we're left with 9. Equals 8w plus 7w is 15w plus 8. Now subtract 8 from each side. 9 minus 8 is 1 equals 15w. Divide each side by 15. Those will cancel and we're left with 1 15th equals w. Yay! One more problem for today it looks like. The point Negative 3, 6 is on a line with a slope of 4. Well, okay. Slope is 4. 4 is a fraction is 4 over 1. Which means for every 1 we go over, we go up 4. It says find two more points on the line. Well... If I go forward 1, I'd be at negative 2. If I go up 4 from 6, I'm at 10. Let me go over 1 more. I'd be at negative 1. Up 4 from 10, I am at 14. Now, write an equation for the line. Well, for the equation, I need the intercept. So we went over 1, we went over 2. Let's just go over 1 more. We'll do a bonus point here where it asks for 2. And if I go over 1 more from negative 1, I am at 0. Up 4 more from 14, I am at 18. So what is the equation of the line? y equals our m, which is 4. x plus our intercept, which is where x equals 0, which we just found to be 18. Excellent. That's our last one for today. This has been another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.